This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. In light of the announcement that there would be tariffs on the European community, will there be a trade war, especially between Europe and the United States? What ideas do the Europeans have to counter what is perceived to be an attack on Europe? Now, let me first of all give you a little bit of a background as to what has been announced today. And here's an article by AFP dated May 31. The United States said Thursday it will impose harsh tariffs on steel and aluminium imports. In other words, 25% tariff on imported steel and 10% tariff on imported aluminium from the European Union, Canada, Mexico at midnight. Another move sure to anger Washington's trading partners. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross said talks with the EU have failed. French Economy Minister Bruno Le Maire has warned before the announcement that the EU would take all necessary measures if the US imposed the tariffs. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said the EU would respond in a firm and united manner to the tariffs. Now, Chancellor Merkel said a lot more than that. She also said, we consider this unilateral measure to be unlawful. The EU has threatened to retaliate by imposing tariffs worth up to $3.3 billion on Harley-Davidson motorbikes, blue jeans, bourbon whiskey, orange juice, and peanut butter. Now, President Trump has said that if that were to happen, he would respond further. The Associated Press wrote on May 31 that besides the U.S. steel and aluminium tariffs, the Trump administration is also investigating possible limits on foreign cars in the name of national security. I will talk about that in a moment. Deutsche Welle added on May 31 that Mexico was the first country hit by the tariffs to announce its response. The country's economy minister said it would put penalties on U.S. products, including steel sheets, lambs, pork, leg and shoulder, sausages, apples, grapes, and different types of cheese. In a joint statement of the EU and Japan, it was said the tariffs would cause serious turmoil in the global market and could lead to the demise of the multilateral trading system. On Wednesday, French President Emmanuel Macron delivered a speech on the matter where he warned about the consequences of a trade war. The imposition of tariffs comes at a time of high tension between Europe and the United States. Also, I'd like to quote briefly from an article by the Wall Street Journal, dated May 31. President Donald Trump's decision to impose tariffs on steel and aluminium from the European Union marks a new low in deteriorating transatlantic relations. It offers another sign that the U.S. administration has broken with decades of American policy by playing down European ties. The tariffs are particularly painful for European leaders because the U.S. and the EU together built the World Trade Organization three decades ago to promote and regulate free trade. The U.S. and the EU had operated as peers on trade now the two camps could be headed for a trade war with unpredictable consequences. Have you listened carefully? Time and time again, they are talking about now a trade war with unpredictable consequences. It goes on to say that transatlantic relations are worsening as the EU faces financial pressure from political chaos in Italy, which has prompted fears of a renewed euro crisis. Now, let me just say, when it comes to Italy, you might have heard the news on that one, too. Whatever happens in that chaotic country, and of course, they have had a history of chaotic developments, the fact of the matter is that Italy will not leave the EU, that they will not forsake the euro, that they will not leave the eurozone. Because, as I will later explain a bit more, the Bible clearly prophesies that Italy will be a major player 
in the European unification as it is already developing. But let's go back to an article by Ars Technica, writing on May 31. U.S. President Donald Trump wants to escalate his trade war to include a total ban on German luxury cars, says a report in Wirtschaftswoche. According to the German publication, which says its report results from talking to several unnamed U.S. and European diplomats during French President Macron's recent visit to Washington, Trump told him that he would maintain his trade policy until no Mercedes models rolled on Fifth Avenue in New York. Wirtschaftswoche's article points out that just prior to his inauguration in 2017, Trump railed against the Mercedes-Benz vehicles he saw in New York. The U.S. market is extremely important for luxury German automakers, and a ban on importing new vehicles would be devastating for brands like Audi, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz. Now, again, the Europeans know that. And the Europeans know that they can only accomplish something in their minds if they completely and totally unite. I'd like to bring to your attention an article now, which was published on May 25, 2018, on the website of the corner.eu. Now, this was published before even the announcement regarding the tariffs was made. Now, this article was written by Israel Rafolovich who is described as a journalist based in Brussels, who has over 50 years of experience in Tel Aviv, Brussels, Bonn, and Washington, D.C. And what he is saying here, it's very bold, but most European leaders would agree with him, even though they would not necessarily openly admit it. But let me just read to you some excerpts from this very interesting article. It says, Things have changed on the international political stage which gives the European Union an unpre unprecedented opportunity to mold and shape its own military and foreign policy in a way that makes it possible for the EU to deal with crises on the European continent and elsewhere without American interference. A key lesson is that the EU has to be the one to call the shots in matters of security, foreign policy, as well as the economy. NATO is a relic of the past, and no strategic concept can revive the irrelevance of NATO. Today, more than ever before, the European Union must take responsibility for its security interests in a way that will result in defense integration and reinforce defense cooperation amongst EU member states to become a serious counterpart for the United States. Mistrust of the United States runs deep in EU quarters. EU member states should be working more forcefully for the creation of the new sovereign EU army under combined EU command and control that will be a capable and powerful military force. The EU had at last has to get bolder and more resolute in its action. It is also an opportunity for the EU, as well as a challenge, to be able to walk alone on the international stage without American crutches. The EU is needed on the international stage and should play a decisive role in calming conflicts. As I said, that's exactly what the European leaders, many of them understand, has to happen. They're talking about now responding to the tariffs with a united approach. But it has to go much deeper, and they know it. And the interesting thing, my friends, is that the Bible, most importantly, tells you that is exactly what's going to happen. Well, of course, we have so many member states right now, and some of them are not necessarily on the same wavelengths. But this will change in that the Bible talks about 10 nations or groups of nations coming out of the EU at this point. In all likelihood, nations of the Eurozone and they are going to take the lead. And they are going to take their responsibility very seriously and then give their authority to a very charismatic German, maybe Austrian, in all likelihood German leader. A political, military, economic leader. And that is exactly what the Bible tells you. Is trade war coming? That's entirely possible. Is Italy leaving 
CEU? Absolutely not, because they are going to be one of the key players. How do I know this? Because the Bible tells me so. And the Bible can tell you that too, if you want to listen to what the Bible has to say. We have prepared three absolutely free booklets, which go into this much more deeply. One is the 10 European revivals of the ancient Roman Empire. Gives you already a clue as to what Italy has to do with it. The ancient Roman Empire. Secondly, the Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord, which tells you about the relationship also between Europe and the United States of America. Believe it or not, the Bible talks a lot about that. And finally, we have this booklet prepared, Europe in Prophecy. Yes, the Bible has a lot to say about Europe in Prophecy. And what we are seeing right now are the beginning stages of what is prophesied. What is going to happen? You need to know. If you really want to be aware of what these developments, as we are describing them in these programs, have to do with Bible prophecy. And until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.